Hello everyone, I want to welcome you to Kix Kids Online Experience. We are so excited about today. We are going to be doing an awesome craft, we are going to be doing awesome snacks, and we're going to hear an awesome story all about how we can choose to believe in Jesus. So let's get in. I'm so excited for tonight. Uh, if you are doing our Kicks program online, make sure to post a picture in the comments on our Facebook video so that we can see who is doing this and maybe you are going to get featured in our next video. Let's jump in. I'm so excited for tonight. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. I am so excited today because we are going to be making some yummy chocolate chip cookies. They're, it's my favorite chocolate chip cook re cookie recipe I have ever come across. They are super easy to make and I'm really excited that we get to be able to do this. So the first thing you're wanna, gonna wanna do is grab all of your ingredients so that you know that you have them. There's nothing worse than starting a recipe only to realize that you have forgotten eggs and you're not actually able to start to make the recipe. So make sure that you have everything in your cupboards. That's your first thing to do. So looking at your recipe card that you would have gotten in the Kix Kids, I made sure to put them in this week because I forgot last week, I know. Um, but make sure that you have that with you as we go through the ingredients. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna need is some all-purpose flour or some whatever flour you have. Um, you're gonna want some flour and then you're gonna want your sugars. So I have white sugar and I have brown sugar. Then you are going to want some salted butter. Make sure you grab that or margarine's probably fine. And you're gonna want table salt or just salt. Baking soda, not baking powder, baking soda. You're gonna want vanilla. So this is vanilla extract. You are going to want an egg. So make sure that you grab your eggs. And you are going to want the most important ingredient out of all of it, chocolate chips. So once you have all of your ingredients, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is turn your oven on to around 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you are going to want to go and wash your hands because that is very important. We wanna make sure we have clean hands as we start baking. So once you have washed your hands, you are going to want to take your butter and you're gonna to wanna to measure it out and you're going to want to put it into the microwave for about 40 seconds. Once it is uh, done in the microwave, it's gonna look a little melty, not fully melted, but that's exactly how you want it. Um, and then we're gonna get started. So let's meet over at my mixer, all right? We'll see you there. So we are here at our mixer. I have a stand mixer. And the first thing that we are going to do is take our microwaved butter here, which is all softened, and we are going to put it in to the bowl. Followed shortly by our sugars. And then what you are going to want to do here is you are going to want to beat this just until it's incorporated, um, until it's creamy. So once you do that, you are going to want to put in your vanilla, which is about a teaspoon of vanilla. and your egg. Now you don't want to beat this for very long because you don't want your cookies to become stiff. So you just want to incorporate the egg just enough where it's going to uh, be mixed in, but not too mixed in. Probably only like 10, 15 seconds there. You just want to I always stir after every time just to make sure we get all the lumps, all the bumps. 
out of there. So once you have that all done, you are going to want to add your flour, so your dry ingredients, so your flour, your baking soda, and your salt into your mixture. Then once you have that all mixed, you're gonna wanna add your chocolate chips. I never measure my chocolate chips because I like them too much. So just add them until it feels right or until you add a three quarters of a cup. You're gonna wanna just mix that really loosely until it's perfect. Or you can mix that in with your hands that's also an option. Make sure that you have your clean hands. And you're just gonna mix that cookie dough in until you're ready to put it onto your baking tray. So then once you have your tray, you're just going to want to take your cookie dough and ball it up. So this recipe makes about 12 cookies. There we go. So we're gonna put this into the oven at 350 degrees for about nine to 10 minutes. Uh, you know that your cookie is done once uh, it starts browning around the edges. It may not look completely done, but I promise it will continue baking as long as your bottom is brown and the edges are brown. It is a great cookie. So here we go. So just a reminder, when you're using your oven, you want to make sure that you have an adult help because it is hot. And these cookies look fan. So you are going to want to make sure that your cookies cool at least a little bit. They'll be very hot, but once you can dig in, because once you eat one, you can't stop. Make sure to give one to the person who helped you bake them and make sure to make sure that you have some good treats for yourself, maybe with a glass of milk or uh, something else, hot chocolate maybe. But enjoy this treat. It is my favorite and let me know how you liked them. Comment down below uh, and tell us how you enjoyed your cookie. And let's grab some and jump into our story. Let's go. Welcome to our story. I have a question for you to start. What would be the best news that a kid your age might hear? I want you to pause and talk about that with your family or whoever's around you right now. Go ahead and pause. So let's hear what happened when a man heard some great news. Our Bible story today is from the New Testament book of John. So go ahead and pause this video, go grab your Bibles and go and find the book of John. It's in the New Testament. So we start our story with Thomas and Thomas was very sad. On Friday, just a few days earlier, his friend Jesus had been killed on a cross and was dead. And Thomas was so upset that he may not have even wanted to talk to anyone, even to his other friends. He might have said things like, I believe that Jesus was the savior God promised to send. I believed that all because I saw all of the wonderful things that Jesus did. This is what Thomas probably thought. And Thomas had been Jesus's friend and disciple for three years, and they were the best three years of his life. Thomas and the other disciples traveled with Jesus as he went from town to town. They ate their meals with Jesus. They had watched him heal the blind and the sick and those people who couldn't walk. Thomas and the other disciples listened 
as Jesus taught them and other people about God and God's great love for them. And now, Thomas wasn't sure what to do. He was even afraid that he might be killed too. And Thomas and some of Jesus' other friends were hiding in an upstairs room of someone's house. They locked the door so that no one could get in, and they were very worried, and they missed their friend and leader, Jesus. And people had told Jesus' friends that Jesus was alive. But Thomas really wasn't sure if he could believe it. After all, people didn't die and then come back to life all by themselves. So Thomas probably wondered, hmm, I don't know about that. And then one day, when Thomas wasn't in the room with his friends, Jesus suddenly appeared. And he said, peace be with you, Jesus said. And then, so that they would know that it was Jesus, he showed them his hands, where they, the marks from the nails were. And his friends touched Jesus' hands. And what do you think that Jesus' friends thought when they saw Jesus? Go ahead and pause this video and talk with those around you. What, what did Jesus' friends think? The disciples were overjoyed to know that Jesus was alive. And since Thomas wasn't in the room when Jesus visit, visited, the other disciples could hardly wait to see Thomas and tell him what had happened. We have seen Jesus, they happily told Thomas. Jesus is alive, Thomas. He's alive. And what do you think that Thomas might have thought when his friends told him this? Go ahead and pause and think about your answer. Thomas looked at the excited faces of the disciples, his friends, and they really seemed to believe that they had seen Jesus. But Thomas wasn't so sure that they had. Maybe you just thought that you saw Jesus, Thomas said. Thomas, it was him. Jesus is alive, said one disciple. What do you think that Thomas said? Let's open up our Bibles and we're going to read John 20, 25 to find out. So go and grab your Bible and open up to that. What do you think that Thomas said? Let's read John 20, 25. So chapter 20, verse 25 to find out. So once you have that, let's read it together. You can pause if you need some more time to find it. But this is what it says in John 20, 25. They told him, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound at his side. Hmm. Thomas wanted to have some real proof that Jesus was in fact alive. So Thomas shook his head. It sounded too good to be true. How could someone die and come back to life? I won't believe that Jesus is alive until I can touch him, said Thomas. And that was that as far as Thomas was concerned. Nothing and anyone said could change his mind. But Jesus loved Thomas and he wanted him to know that he was alive. So a week later, Jesus' friends were in the same house. This was the this time, Thomas was with them. And just like before, all the doors were locked and Thomas heard a familiar voice say, peace be with you. Imagine how Thomas must have felt when he turned around and saw Jesus standing there in the room. Thomas, Jesus said, come and look at my hands, touch them. I want you to be sure that I am really alive. My Lord and my God, said Thomas. Now Thomas knew that Jesus had come back to life. Thomas must have been so glad. And this time he was ready to trust and to follow Jesus no matter what. Jesus said to Thomas, you believe now that you have seen me. And then Jesus said something about all of us who weren't there that night. Jesus said, blessed are people who believe without being able to see me. Hmm. 
When Jesus talked about the people who would believe in him even though they had not seen him alive on earth, he was talking about you and he was talking about me. We haven't seen Jesus, yet we can choose to believe that he is God's promised savior. We can choose to act and follow Jesus' example by caring for others. And we can choose forgiveness and obey Jesus, even when it's hard. And when we can choose Jesus and ask Jesus to be our guide and help us with our choices. When you choose Jesus, or when you choose to believe in Jesus, that Jesus is God's son and that he died and rose again so that you could be forgiven, you can choose to become a member of God's family and live with him forever. Isn't that awesome? That we have that choice to be able to choose Jesus and choose to believe in him that he is real, just like Thomas did once he, once he saw him. And he knew that Jesus was Lord and Savior over his life. How awesome is that? Will you go ahead and pray with me here today? Let's pray. God, I wanna thank you so much for who you are. God, I thank you that you care for us and that you you care so much for us, God. Um, even though we are not able to meet together right now, God, we are able to do this online and that's so awesome. So God, I pray for all of those who are meeting in their living rooms or in their bedrooms or wherever they are, God, watching this video, maybe at their dining room table. God, I just pray that you would be with them, that you would show them your love. And God, I thank you that we can choose you. I thank you for the love of Jesus and for him dying on the cross for us to save us. So God, thank you that we get to choose you every day. We love you, we praise you, and we pray all of this in your name. Amen. Amen. Let's keep going. So our craft today is going to remind us of our Bible story and about Thomas. So in your kicks kit, you should have gotten two sheets of construction paper. And what you're going to need to find at home is a marker or something to write with. You're going to need a glue stick and you're going to need a pair of scissors. All right, so I have mine here, so let's get started. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is take your one of your sheets of paper. I'm gonna choose my, my blue one or my green one, whatever color you think this is, and I'm going to fold it in half. So go ahead and fold yours right down the middle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my left hand because I'm right-handed, and I'm gonna put my hand on the piece of paper and we're going to trace out just your hand. That thumb gets on there. So once you have your hand traced out, then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you make a line here at the bottom. So you're making sure that you're not gonna cut the bottom part. So then what you're gonna do while it's cut, while it's still folded, you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut out your hand. So go ahead and cut it out. This might be where it gets a little tricky and you might want to ask for an adult's help. That's totally cool. All right, so once you have your hands cut out, you're gonna open it, and then you have two hands. They basically fit your hands. So this craft is going to remind us of the story of Thomas. And Thomas said he wasn't gonna believe that Jesus was alive until he could see his hands and where the nails had pierced Jesus' hands. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our pink sheet of paper and we're going to actually fold it just a little bit because you're only you're not going to need something that big. And what I would like you to do is I want you to draw. We're going to cut out two hearts, so you can draw that. 
And then we're gonna cut out with our scissors again, two hearts. So I cut out, I, I draw a half a heart so that I know that it's gonna match on the other side when I open my heart back up. Like this. And then I have one heart. I'm gonna get my other heart. So we have one, two hearts. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hands, we're gonna take our glue stick, and we're going to put glue on the back of our heart. And we're going to glue the heart into the middle of the hand. Because that's where the marks on Jesus' hands would have been. Right in the middle of his hands, maybe. Or at least that's what our, our craft is going to, to show. And put that just like that. And then we're going to write a Bible verse down here. So go and grab your Bible and we're going to copy it right out of our Bible, all right? So go and grab that. We are going to copy right from our Bibles, John 20, verse 29, where it says, Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. So let's write that down here on this part. So there is our craft, and that is going to remind us that we can choose to believe in Jesus. Awesome. Whew. Wow, we had an awesome night here at Kix. We did an awesome snack. I love those cookies. They are so yummy. They are my favorite, and I'm just so thankful that I get to share those with you. I hope that you make them and enjoy them. Um, we did an awesome craft that reminded us of our story about Thomas and how he wanted to see Jesus to believe in him. But we get to choose to believe in Jesus without seeing him and believe that he is our savior and he is our Lord. How awesome is that? Uh, thank you so much for joining us online. Thank you so much for sharing this video with your friends. And if you are uh, watching our video for the first time and you want a Kix kit that comes with things that you might need like recipe cards or with um, things for the craft, please email me at natasha.davidson55 at gmail.com and we will be make sure to have a Kix kit ready for you for next week. Thank you so much for being here, guys. I love you, and we will see you next week.